Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining EAC's webinar today. This is Addison Tyne. I am the marketing specialist here at EAC. We will be recording the session today, so pending any technical difficulties, everyone will receive a replay of the webinar. Please feel free to drop any questions in the queue, and we will get to them after the presentation. Following the session today, a short survey will appear, so please stick around and answer these questions after the webinar. Today, I will start off with a short introduction of EAC, and then our technical account manager and Creo expert, Todd, Todd Levenow, will be diving into the augmented reality functionality in Creo. And then you can go to the next slide, Todd. At EAC, our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. You can go to the next one. We are located all over the U.S. and our headquarters are currently established in Minneapolis. We are more than just a value-added reseller for PTC, though. For 20 years now, we have helped companies innovate their product development processes. With experts in over 22 different areas of product development, we help organizations create better products, rethink what may seem impossible, and ultimately achieve results that make a lasting impact on the world as we know it as today. Beyond helping organizations connect to the information they need, we also help uh, companies to connect their enterprises as well as specific focal points which produce bits and pieces of their operational value. We also assist with design and engineering projects, host educational webinars, and PTC certified training courses. And then you can go through the next two slides. Ted. And the next one. Aside from all that, we have partnered with Form Labs, which allows us to offer our customers some of the latest and most affordable 3D printing options in the industry. All in all, we want you to know that EAC is a company to get all the technology at the forefront of your business to help make your team successful. Our niche is helping you figure out where to start. Our specialty is helping you to build on what you already have. With that, I'm sure you've heard enough of me for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand things over to Todd so we can dive into AR functionality and Creo. So why are we doing what we're doing? Um, so why should I care about augmented reality? So the, the slides that I had kind of rolled through here before really detail the process of, uh, you know, what people often do today for design reviews. So you've got the digital model sort of set up in Creo, and you want to, you know, share this information, maybe have a design review, make sure things fit together the way they're supposed to. Uh, you don't have any interference issues or, you know, the model actually does what it's what it's intended to do. Well, how do you do that today? A lot of times what people will do is they'll, they'll start FTPing files or they make PDF drawings and they'll start throwing those back and forth via email or, or you know, uh, make a backup of the, of the assembly and then send that to somebody else uh, via drop, uh, or Dropbox or, or Google Docs or something like that, or maybe they email things back and forth, right? So it's, it's a bit of a challenge to share this information. Slide here, um, the challenges that are associated with this. Um, here we are. Uh, it, like the slide talks about, it's it's tough to share, right? And and especially now in in the age of uh, COVID, um, we're not all together in the office or in the factory like we used to be, right? So we're all working remotely, and it's a bit of a challenge to uh, to get together and do these design reviews. Another challenge that we have relative to working on the, on the designs and, and and understanding what we're looking at um, is sort of indicated by this image on the right. Uh, so we've got this this mixing um, vessel. But we don't really know how big it is, right? We've got notes that kind of call out the details of the items that are included in that assembly. And it's got different, uh, you know, uh, pumps and valves and other things are going in there. But we don't really know how big is this thing, right? Does it sit on the back of a semi? Does it sit on my desk? Um, how big is this thing? It's really tough to get sort of a, an idea of scale and and and, and uh, function of that object. On this slide, what I was talking about was, uh, um, you know, what's typically done is is uh, sending off 2D drawings, right? So we have a wealth of information, lots of rich detail and, and information uh, conveyed via drawings, but oftentimes it's very complex, right? Tough to digest what's going on here. Um, if you stare at this thing for a little while, you probably, you might be able to figure out that that's a, a ship or a submarine. But if you're just kind of looking at this from a high level, you kind of stand back. It's really difficult to understand what information is being conveyed there. And what does that thing really look like? Uh, when, uh, you know, if I, I build this thing and I follow the plans and follow the, the, the drawing, what am I going to end up with? 
uh, it, it's really tough to sort of get the, a feeling for what that what that's going to make. So back to this slide, uh, what Creo Augmented Reality uh, Design Share is going to provide for us is the ability to share this information out uh, from Creo Parametric directly. So we have the, the, the 3D model already built up in, in Creo Parametric. All we need to do is to, is to find a way to share that information in a controlled fashion so that people can um, you know, consume that and, and, and look at that information and interact with it and you know, uh, understand how things fit together and, and, and see how things work. So uh, on this slide, what I was talking about is uh, more details of what that functionality gives us. Uh, so we have the ability to create the augmented reality experiences directly from Creo Parametric, assuming that we've got uh, Creo 4, uh, build code M10 or newer, uh, you'll be able to publish these items directly from uh, Creo Parametric 2, um, uh, PTC's cloud, and you have a, uh, the ability to control who can access that information. Uh, so it's not just up there, uh, you know, so that everybody can see it. You do have control over who can access that and those types of things. But you're publishing that directly from Creo, and you'll be able to share that uh, via a link or an email, and, and then you know, uh, do your design review uh, remotely, uh, and, and look at the models that way. So uh, I was just getting to this slide here, talking about the setup for this. So the first step in the process, you'll find this in the tools tab in the ribbon. You'll find a section there for augmented reality. And the first thing we'll do is to, is to create this um, uh, spatial target. And that's uh, represented there by that little uh, sort of cyan colored pad, or that's just sort of a surface. And you get to scale that up and down and then locate that where you'd like it to go, right? So you're kind of scaling it based on um, the size of the model that you want to, to represent and then position it where you'd like it to go. So in this case, we're gonna move it to some location closer to uh, the, the ground where the snowmobile would actually be sitting on the ground. And of course you have options for placing that. You can pick the standard plane or you can pick on a particular view and then you can uh, control the distance, you know, kind of from the, the world coordinate system where you'd like that, uh, that uh, uh, spatial target to, to live. And here's some just some drop down options, you know, what that looks like inside the ribbon. Okay, so once you have that done, the next step in the process is really easy. We're just gonna publish that model. And so what that does is you get to specify the name that people are gonna see when they, when they go to look at your augmented reality experience. You have uh, different options there for the viewable quality. So con consider this, right? So how are people gonna actually utilize this information, right? So you could look at this on a laptop or a workstation. Um, and in that case, uh, you, know, you, you can get all the rich detail there, but you, you can control the level of detail uh, because you may actually want to look at this on a phone or a tablet where you don't necessarily have the latest, uh, you know, uh, multi-threaded processor with gobs of RAM and that kind of stuff. So you want to be able to look at this on a phone, which we'll do here in just a minute. So you have the ability to control the viewable quality for that. And then you can also uh, specify where you want to publish that too. There's a personal slice of PTC's cloud and then you can have a more public version of that. Uh, and, and we'll talk about the details of that here in just a bit. But what this is actually asking me to do now is to specify the target and that would be the spatial target that we just placed in the previous step. So once you uh, do that, you'll go ahead and say OK and publish that. You'll get this nice um, little uh, successful publishing notification that pops up. The next thing you do is go manage the model, right? So uh, when you manage that, that's going to take you to PTC's cloud and you'll log in with your standard PTC credentials. And if you don't have one, uh, you know, we can certainly help you get set up with that as far as uh, logging into PTC site and accessing tech support and, and those types of things. But it'll be your same username that you uh, use when you log into PTC site. So once you get there, right, you'll have a couple of different uh, tabs, one for the personal items, and you'll have up to 10, I think, uh, I think it's five different options there, or five different uh, publishes. And then once you publish uh, the sixth one, it's gonna kind of overwrite the oldest one. So you, you do have sort of a, a, a rolling window of publishes that you can have there inside your personal section. Then you also have another option here, uh, PTC demo, or there's a, I'll show you what that looks like here. It's a, a PTC uh, option one, two, or three, or whatever the current version of that is. It's just a different, think of it as a different folder for that, where you're gonna publish the experiences. Then from there, uh, once that's done, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, you have a, a dashboard and here you can specify um, the viewers. So you can actually effectively invite people um, to uh, utilize your published experience. So on the personal one, it, you, that's just for you, right? So you'll, you'll have just your five different published versions of that that you can go and look at. On the more public one here, you'll actually invite users in um, and uh, send them an email to, to provide them access to that. Of course, it gives you the dates that it was published, and then you have the share tab here that, that will um, actually um, take you to the next page where you're going to go ahead and um, 
I'll just go ahead and take you through this. We'll add a viewer, send in the email address. And what gets generated then is the standard sort of form, right, that um, gives the links um, and also gives you the link to the viewing tool. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like on my phone, but you do need a, a, the Creo View app, or it's actually a, the uh, ThingWorks uh, View app. And uh, from there, you just uh, plug that in your phone or tablet or your viewing device. And then you'll go ahead and, and look at the, uh, the augmented reality published experience. So capabilities, uh, we'll just kind of step through this. Again, I'll show you this live in a minute, but this is gonna take you through the process of publishing and then interacting with that published experience. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me just put the PowerPoint away here for just a second. So back to Creo, right? So here's the snowmobile that we just were looking at and um, we've got this, um, you know, it's all designed and ready to do the design review. As I mentioned over on the tools tab in the ribbon, you'll go here and over towards the right-hand side, you'll find the augmented reality section. And we'll go ahead and just place a spatial target go ahead and pick on that. And it's going to drop this in. And this is the, you know, the dashboard for that. You have the different options there for which plane you'd like to utilize there, or you can create your own custom plane, or you can define um, a plane using um, assembly type constraints. So you can go ahead and define that that way. Pretty simple. What we're going to do in this case is you can just use the drag handle to, to drag this thing up and down where you'd like that to go. Easy to do. I'll just plug in a value there, say 200. Right. And then you can also scale this thing up and down. Note that there's a drag handle here, so you can kind of manipulate that where you'd like that to go. Right. So we go ahead and do that, and you've got the nice little dragger. So if you wanted to move that, you can kind of drag that around it. And this is sort of the target, the center point for when you place this augmented reality experience into your physical world right in front of you. That's the, that's the location where that's going to be. So if I wanted that to be moved more to the front or to the back of the snowmobile, I could do that that way too. So we'll just drop that there. Okay, so that's uh, placing the spatial target. Then we can go ahead and publish the model, right? So we'll go ahead and do this. In this case, it's gonna uh, ask me to log in. Uh, I guess I've already logged in, so we don't have to do that. But here's where you're gonna provide the name for that, and then you can specify the level of detail. And uh, generally speaking, you, you probably wanna go either medium or high in most cases, and I'll, I'll show you why that is when we actually look at the publish experience. Um, that effectively allows you to um, turn components on and off, right? So that lower level of detail, you're probably not going to have that functionality for doing that. But if you publish with either medium or high, you'll have um, uh, more options to interact with that. The primary difference for that really is the size of the files that are going to get created. So it's really sort of a bandwidth thing and a uh, model size that gets published. So obviously the 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 you know the viewable quality if that's set to low it's going to be a smaller file and quicker to load but you're so, sort of sacrificing the level of detail that you're going to get presented in your augmented reality experience in this case uh, we'll go ahead and pick on the, the ptc demo 3 that's the location where i'm going to publish that too and again the collector is waiting for me to pick on this uh, target and then when i go ahead and publish that um it's going to take a couple minutes so i'm going to cancel all of this i've already got one of these published but uh it, it's just a you know something like uh you know a minute and a half or two minutes uh, to do actually the actual publishing but what happens when you're done with that if i go to the manage model section you'll find uh, it takes you back to this uh, uh slice and ptc's cloud and you have up to five different items that you can publish here to the personal section and if i go to the ptc demo 3 location here's that published uh snowmobile that we just made and if i want to share that out with somebody I can go ahead and do this. And again, I've just emailed this to myself, but you can add multiple different viewers here. And when you go ahead and add this, uh, it's gonna generate that email um, that I showed just a minute ago and then send that off so that it can go ahead and click on the link to download the viewing app and then go ahead and click on the viewer itself um, to, or the, uh, the, the thing mark there uh, to, or the QR code to go and actually look at that object. So what does it look like in 3D? So I've got my phone hooked up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this over here to kind of show you what that looks like in real time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scan the QR code there on my phone. Now it's got that. So now I'm just, uh, I've got a piece of paper here just to kind of help me sort of place this thing. And now just following the information on the screen, let's see if I move that there so you can read it. It says, just point the camera at a horizontal surface and then move it around. So really what it's doing is it's trying to figure out in space, it's tracking visually uh, in the phone where that item is. So I'll just go ahead and tap that location to place that. And now it's remembering um, that uh, we're 200 millimeters above that surface. So if I just kind of use the pinch and zoom here, I can actually kind of pinch back out. Now you can see that snowmobile is right there on my desk next to my mouse. And I can start interacting with this. So I'm just using this to kind of move this around with one finger. If I use two fingers, I can spin that around. And if I want to zoom in on that again, I'll just do the pinch and I can kind of position this. I'm holding my phone kind of in one position. 
But if I actually move that around, you can see that now I'm actually kind of working with that as if that snowmobile was sitting on my desk right here. Right. And so the level of detail thing that I mentioned before, let's see if I can kind of zoom in on this a little bit. So maybe I want to start turning some components off. Let's take the gas cap there and we'll just use the, the hide button. And let's uh, take the seat and we'll hide that and pick a couple of other components here. So you can kind of see that I'm just picking on the objects that I want to turn off. And so now I'm starting to kind of peel that model apart and understand kind of what's there, right? So just kind of by interacting with that. So the idea here is that I could do this design review and kind of look at this model right here at my desk. Obviously a snowmobile is not gonna fit on the top of my desk, but now I can, I can look around and kind of see what's going on in that assembly as if it was right here sitting in front of me. So that's the, the whole beauty of the augmented reality experience there is that I can do those types of things by working with that model um, instead of having to send you know, PDFs and make drawings and all of those types of things. So that's the overview. Let me go back to the PowerPoint here and kind of do a summary of what we talked about. Uh, let's do this right here. And of course, this switches to different screens there. So let me just swap that quickly. Okay, so um, the value, right? So here's the why. Why are we doing this? It's cool, yeah, but you know, how do we translate cool into something that's practical and, and, and usable? Right, so you get to do things like enhance the customer experience. So you can you can send this off to a customer, and they can get a feel for you know the product that you're developing. How is that going to work for them? So yeah, you could send them a drawing, right? But that's not really going to be very helpful in a lot of cases. Here, you can actually you know virtually interact with this thing uh, uh, as as it's being designed, and they can say, yep, that's not going to fit, or hey, let's move this over there, so we can you know, interact with that a little bit more easily. And you don't have to be a CAD user, right? So, um, you know, this is uh, uh, sharing that information out with a wider audience and, and, and uh, you know, helping you with product acceptance and, you know, building better designs for, for your customers. Uh, bottom bullet point there, protecting intellectual property, right? So, you know, you're controlling who has access to that information. Um, so you're not just opening up to everybody. Uh, you can share that with just those uh, people that are intended to receive that. Other benefits, um, reducing time to market. So if you can find out sooner that something's not gonna fit or it's not gonna, you know, somebody can't reach something or, you know, it, the design just isn't gonna work as intended, I'd rather find that out sooner rather than later in the design process. So it can help me eliminate those types of errors. Now, obviously, along with that, there's product development cost decreases that can happen uh, and the quality and innovation aspect of that goes up. Plus, customers like working with this kind of stuff too, right? So it, it, there's a certain wow factor that goes along with that, that you, know, you can um, incorporate that into your design process and, and um, sort of differentiate yourself from your competition. So that's sort of the overview of the functionality. Um, the next slide here talks about uh, some, some opportunities for savings. Uh, I'll, I'll throw that back to Addison. Yeah, thanks, Todd. I don't see any questions in the queue. I do want to thank everyone for sticking around today, and I apologize for the audio there. Um, there are a few different things that we are currently offering you to help advance your processes during this time. For those of you who are new to this series, I do want to let you all know we're offering 50% off on these 16 extensions, this is a limited time offer, so I don't want to, you to miss the ability to take advantage of this. It is a great time to add additional functionality and skills into your tool set. If you are interested at all, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to help get any questions answered um, for you guys. Um, and then furthermore, if you want to go to the next slide, for anyone looking to complete a project that requires an extra set of hands or maybe even an additional skill set, we do offer engineering services. Our team of engineering ex experts can drastically reduce your time to market, solve those problems you've been facing and help you take it to the next level. Uh, if this is something you're interested in at all, please reach out to me. Um, and my email is right there, atime at eacpds.com. And I promise to help work in a sweet deal for, deal for you. Finally, we always do offer personalized and customized training. If you are looking to advance your entire team in a certain skill set or a certain set of engineers, or maybe just a few individuals, we can form a training class just for you. My goal is to really help you take advantage of these offers. In fact, for a limited time, if you reference the word Creo 2020, I will even make sure we bake in a deal for you with 20% off. I want everybody to have several 
$500 saved here. So while advancing their skills and learning the engineering tactics they need. If you'd like more information on this offer, or if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me and ask me about those too. And lastly, I'd like to mention if there are several options that you're interested in taking advantage of, I'm more than willing to help your team put together a bundle discount. Then this next slide here is a complete list of our Creo webinar series, um, kind of getting to the end here. Uh, where you can spool up on anything and everything you need to know, such as helpful hints, exclusive tips, and how to make the most out of your Creo design environment. Next week, we will be talking about Unite functionality and flexible modeling in Creo. So to wrap things up this morning, another reminder, there will be a short survey that will appear once we end here. If you have a couple minutes to spare, please fill this out. We do appreciate it. Thanks again, everyone, and we hope to see you next week.